Australia's economy is heavily reliant on real estate. Perhaps not as much as Canada, but it's certainly a big component as households rely on excessively leveraged home ownership schemes to buy ever-increasing real estate. The average household is unable to afford their current lifestyle because the debt has become so excessive. In the recent past, we have finally seen a change that will unravel the Australian economy from the inside out. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to have our focus entirely on Australia. I want to show you what's happening particularly with the real estate crisis that is unfolding right now. Let's begin by taking a look at this. Reserve Bank says rate cuts and QE possible as Australian housing enters, quote, unchartered territory. For many months, the Reserve Bank has told us that the next move in interest rates is likely to be up, but not for some time. Don't panic, don't worry, we're gonna keep it the way it is, have no fear. But in a speech to Business Economist Dinner on Thursday night, not only did the bank's deputy governor say that further rate hikes were possible, but that the RBA could could engage in quantitative easing like the Fed did if needed. So don't worry about this because we're going to be taking care of everything. We're going to reduce the interest rates. We're going to do some money printing, but only if it's needed. Don't worry. Let's not weaken the dollar. Let's just keep everything the way it is. And they try to keep the economy going, try to keep it moving, try to keep the stimulus happening from the government. And if the government can't keep up with it, then they'll monetize the debt. They will create all types of different packages and bailout measures that any one of these different central banks have engaged in. Whether you look at the ECB doing all kinds of different methods from the CSPP program, and that is the purchasing of corporate debt, or maybe like the Federal Reserve buying up the asset-backed securities, buying up all the garbage that they have on their balance sheets, look around. You can see all different forms of quantitative easing that's taking place today day all across the world. Could Australia be next? Well, we'll see. Aussie house prices just keep falling. Property experts CoreLogic now say that Sydney's price decline is bigger than the fall in the 1989-91 at over 10%. Over 10% right now today in Sydney specifically. This is one city that I have been focusing on. Obviously, it is a very important city for Australia. We're looking at a lot of the population living in this one particular city. It gets a lot of attention and this is really just one of many, but it's leading the pack. Of course, the prices went up like crazy in Sydney, but they're coming down quite fast as well. There are a lot of cranes in Sydney, a lot of homes being built, a lot of skyscrapers, and it doesn't seem to be stopping even though we're having this crisis unfolding. And there is going to be a lot of problems in the near future as these buildings are built and perhaps they didn't get what they thought they would. So usually what happens is pre-construction, they're going to sell a whole bunch of condos, they're going to try to get it at maximum occupancy even before the building is dug from the ground. And what they try to do is they try to give incentives, they try to give all kinds of deals. Sometimes in really hot markets, you have lineups of people that are coming in trying to buy it up. But if that building is built and the economy isn't doing so well and houses are being bought up as they were before, then prices are falling and people are left holding on to a unit in that building, maybe even more than one unit in some cases, and it's not even worth the amount that they bought and they see the prices are falling and falling lower. That is going to be a very big problem for a lot of these individuals, not just in Australia or Sydney, but in many cities around the world where they've pushed too far. Well, there's more details in here. They're talking about car sales are doing terrible now. They're doing a lot of unfortunate methods to try and stimulate it, but nothing will work. It needs to actually be allowed to fall on its face but that's not what they like to do, of course. OECD warns that Australia to prepare contingency plans for a severe collapse in the housing market. Think about this right now. The OECD is warning Australia to prepare for severe collapse. I'm not saying that, although I do agree. 
I'm not saying that. The OECD is saying that specifically, and I'm glad that you're here to listen to this information directly from mainstream news sources. Australia is warned to prepare for contingency plans for a severe collapse in the housing market that could lead to a crisis situation in our banks. This is going to be an interesting article. Let me quickly read as much as I can from it. Australia's regulators have been warned to prepare contingency plans, crisis situation, the OECD's latest in depth assessment, which I'll show you that. I have the link in the description in a moment. Maintains that while the current trajectory of house prices declines would suggest a soft landing, some risk of hard landing remains. And of course, what we have right now going on is that globally, the housing prices are beginning to fall. Globally, you're seeing the quantitative tightening policies, and this is all going to put further pressure downward. And one of Australia's most important partners around the world, China, is also weakening. So that's going to put further pressure on them as well. I'll show you more about China in a moment. So the OECD wants the Reserve Bank to begin raising the cash rate from its record low as soon as possible to prevent imbalances accumulating further. The last cut they did so to 1.5%. This is extremely low, and it is a big mistake on the part of the Australian Central Bank, but they all are making a big mistake today. They are all keeping them at historically low levels in order to stimulate the loans, in order to stimulate the banking system, and in order to fund and fuel this garbage financial system which robs people every single day of their lives. Australia's housing market is a source of vulnerabilities due to the elevated prices and related household debt. A direct hit to the financial sector from a wave of mortgage defaults is unlikely. So don't worry about it because it's unlikely. Therefore, you can sleep well at night. Just like they said in 2006, just like they said in 2007, you don't have to worry about subprime. Subprime is contained. Have no fear. Oh my goodness. Actually, you do have to fear because everything is unraveling. That's what they do. They tell you everything is okay right up into that last second. However, if housing prices collapse, consumer spending could suffer via negative impact on wealth, including exposures from bank shares, which would encourage deleveraging together with reduced housing-related expenditures. This would put pressure on the whole economy, and of course, that's the way it is. Okay, that's enough ranting on that. Let me go and show you some charts right now. A range of economic, social, and environmental challenges. I just really wanted to focus on the right-hand side. Large house price increases, real house price. Just take a look at what has happened happen over the years from the 90s up until today. Canada and Australia have basically gone up in a straight line. And then you look at the US where it had certainly gone up, but there was actually a moment where it took a breather and that was excellent. That allowed people to buy in, that allowed individuals to get cheaper prices. But of course, people who took the risks in this region here are going to get burned. That's just the way it is. And it's unfortunate a lot of people lose out, but bailing them out is not the solution. It doesn't fix the problem. It only makes it worse for everybody on the whole. So you're looking at a place in which this country, the US, was able to get a little breather, whereas Australia and Canada, right through the financial crisis, basically continued on. And that's not good. Showing us that we have a rate at which it's declining in Sydney specifically that we haven't seen before for most people. I mean, look at it going back beyond 1989, 1990, and that's a level that not a lot of people have been around in business to see. This here shows us the exports of commodities to Asia remaining dominant. All right, so on the left-hand side, you could just see goods and services exports by partner, and you're looking at China and Hong Kong being 34%. That is a big chunk. And then you have Japan in second place with 12%. On the right-hand side, it just shows you the different exports that they have, coal, 15%, iron ores, and concentrates, 16%. So you gotta look at who their partners are, who they're 
doing business with and if their economies are weak it's going to have an impact on Australia as well I'm asked very regularly about Australia I know I have a lot of subscribers from there I want to say hello to all of you of course basically what we have right now a situation is that Australia is dependent on China and Asia as well so if you do see tensions in between the US and China and then China's economies coming down that is going to have an indirect impact on Australia so keep your eyes on that very quickly just wanted to show you strong GDP per capita performance this is increasing at a rate there the red line Australia here and it is uh, doing quite well in this respect of course we know that these numbers are entirely manipulated and mean very little but I wanted to show you that it's some positive news that some individuals are just dying to see so there you go house prices are easing but the household debt burden continues to rise now these charts are quite small but you can just see on the top left corner house price developments in major city cities you can see Sydney is the blue line and that has declined quite a bit there obviously leading the pack in terms of its decline household liabilities Australia is unfortunately continuously rising Canada not too far behind but if you can believe it or not at a 200% of their net household disposable income in Australia today that is just ridiculous there's no other word for me to use and I'm going to move on. There's more charts there if you want to check them out for yourself. This is an article that I just wanted to touch on a couple points. So let's see what I can cover here. In the past nearly three decades, the demand for real estate has been driven by various factors, including the ability of Australians to borrow large amounts of money to purchase real estate, either through record low interest rates or new mortgage products such as interest-only loans. This has sent real estate prices substan substantially higher. And that has generated what we have seen with the price but of course this cannot be sustained forever there is this fallacy that you can sustain the prices as long as you have people foreigners and other things that are coming in to buy it all up but it doesn't work that way the majority of the buyers are going to be domestic and if they can't buy it prices will come down if you increase interest rates prices will come down if you stop your quantitative easing I assure you prices will come down but in real estate it takes a little while it's not gonna happen overnight so that's what you have to keep your eyes on in terms of real estate all of the different scams and schemes that they have created whether it's interest only whether it's the ninja loans whether it is all of these different asset backed garbages that they've got underlying all of this it's going to become a problem at some point either directly or indirectly a number of housing industry insiders have issued a warning about curbing negative gearing with the mortgage company boss this individual saying that it could tip Australia into recession that happens to be one issue negative gearing there's all kinds of different scams that they have been encouraging and they've been trying to actually ensure that something like negative gearing continues and it is truly something that is only barely coming into the news just for a moment and then it hides back under the rug. So this right here is the OECD's Economic Survey of Australia from December of 2018. Check it out, not just if you're in Australia, but if you want to see it for yourself, all the details, everything about the economy is listed in here. I just covered a few points from it, but I wanted to always give you the source of the data for you to see for yourself. If you want to, go down to the link in the description under the sources, and then it'll bring you over to the document where I have the links there. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have it all. You can actually flip through them at Amazon. There's a link in the description to check out. If you're more interested in the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.